All right. Akudama Drive Episode 4. Grabe. <laughs> Another hair racing episode. No wonder Speed ang title nito. All right. It really reminds me a lot of the movie Speed. Okay? Kasi dun sa 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 pelikula lang 'yon which which uh, by the way it's also the movie that where the movie where Keanu Reeves became a really big star. Okay? That's that's where he became uh, what you call this? That's where he became a Hollywood icon. Speed. Ang Speed kasi they were on a bus yung yung hindi na huli na yung hindi na huli ni Keanu Reeves doon na puli puli siya doon eh puli si Keanu Reeves meron siyang hindi na huli na parang na Mad Bomber which is played by Dennis Hopper the late Dennis Hopper alright ang tinaget ni character ni Dennis Hopper doon itong bus na to that if it goes uh, if it goes below 60 miles per hour sasabog yung bomba Alright? Gan- exactly ganun din dito. Well, no, no, not, not exactly like that. Pero, it involved speed. Okay? It involved speed sa episode na to. Kasi, well, they were being hunted down by, by the two executioners. And they had to get to the vault right away. Kasi meron pala tinatawag na absolute quarantine zone at saka, saka decontamination zone. Kapag Nakarating na sila doon sa absolute quarantine zone. They only have little time left kasi sa decontamination zone, pwede na silang patayin. Kasi organic matter silang lahat eh. Alright? <clears throat> Now, overall, alright, it's a crazy good episode. Okay? It's a crazy good episode, but not as crazy good as episode 3. Alright? <laughs> That takes the cake. Now, It's a crazy good episode, episode 4. Flow ng story, pacing ng story. Although fast-paced siya, you can still, uh, you can still get the idea of what the heroes are, of what the Akodama are going through right now. Alright? And of course, kaya, kaya pala speed ang title ng episode because it, re- it reminds me a lot of the movie Speed. Alright? They were able to go through it And, whoa, okay, a surprising twist. Yung palang nagko-control kay Black Cat, dalawang bata. Okay, magkapatid. Grabe. Grabe ang twist. Grabe ang twist ng storya. Alright? Graphics-wise, yup, the violence is there. <laughs> And, Brawler almost got killed, okay? Munting na mamatay si, munting na mamatay si Brawler dito. And, And of course, Cutthroat was Cutthroat was at his sadistic best. Tuwing nakakita ng dugo, gusto na pumatay. Alright? So, everything worked out fine. They were able to they were, they were able they were able to inadvertently okay, to inadvertently rescue these two kids. At yung pala, ngayon nagtataka sila ngayon kung bakit bakit pinapupunta sa bakit pinadadala ngayon sa kanto ang dalawang batang to. Okay? yun ang pinagtatakan ngayon ng buong grupo. Why? It's a big why. Okay, so far, the biggest why of this anime. Why is Kansai sending these two innocent kids to Kanto? Why? Alright? At, wow, okay. Siguro, yung genius level ng dalawang bata nito ay lagpasta kay Hacker. Alright? Even Hacker is impressed. Even Hacker is impressed. All right. So again, overall, it's a it's a crazy good episode. Okay. The the plot twist. Okay, just got crazier. <laughs> It just got crazier. All right. So, Akudama Drive episode 4. Two thumbs up and a big two. <laughs> two thumbs up and a big two. Grabe. Again, I should say, Studio Piro has over-delivered again with with this episode, right? We all know Studio Piro is a, it's a, it's a legendary anime studio, but for me, they over-delivered on this anime. If you ask me, it's on pace to becoming a classic, 
Again, it's from Studio Pero. They over-delivered on this one. Alright? Talagang grabe. Grabe ang, grabe ang anime na to. Okay? Thank you, Studio Pero. Okay? In advance, thank you, Studio Pero, for bringing us this anime. Galing. So again, Ako Dama Drive Episode 4, a solid two thumbs up. Alright? A solid two thumbs up. Okay, I'm gonna hold this. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it like this. So, Higurashi 2020 Episode 5. Okay. Um, basically, a slice of life episode. Except the end. <laughs> right? Except the end. Now, um, well, we all know that uh, uh, what you call this, Mion uh, is a, uh, what you call this, a uh, an heiress of sorts. Kasi, yung lahat kasi ng mga kamag-anak niya, minigosyo sa, sa town na yun. Okay? And siya ang inaasahan na tumulong. Okay? You can call her an heiress kasi eventually, uh, if, one of, if one of them dies, saan niya mapupunta? So, we've seen another side of her na medyo questionable. Okay? Sinabi niya sa episode na may kakambal siya, but mm, Keiichi sort of believes it, but I don't. Okay? Keiichi believes it, but I don't. Alright? Anybody can say that uh, that uh, I, I have a twin. Okay? I, I can say that I have a twin brother, but actually I don't. You know what? <clears throat> If there, if Myon is, uh, if if Myon has anything to hide, it's probably because she has a split personality. That's the usual excuse of someone with well, uh, this is my opinion, all right. That's the ex usual excuse of someone with schizophrenia, right? Uh, the, the psychological disease wherein you have multiple personalities. Yeah. That's your... That's probably one of their usual excuses. Lalo kung hindi pa... Hindi pa nakakingin ng tulong sa psychiatrist or psychologist. That's their usual excuse. Kaya hindi ko muna pinaniwalaan eh. And in the final scene, here's this gang of hoodlums trying to beat up Keiichi. So, Myon or... Shion comes to her rescue, comes to his rescue, and all of a sudden, people within the next hundred, people within 100 feet of all of them started ganging up. And with this, ganon ang tingin, ganon ang tingin, ganon ang tingin nila. <clears throat> all right, it is the only, um, it's the only creepy part of the episode. Right. It's the only creepy part of the episode. But ooh, okay. Now, overall, it's a good episode. Okay. Uh, if there's any indication of it, it's a uh, it's a setup for the next. I say pala part one lang pala ito, ng mini arc or something. But here are my theories for uh, for the next episode or for for this episode. Myon has Myon has schizophrenia. All right. Because <clears throat> any, well, anybody can say that that he or she has a twin. All right. Now either that's true or may schizophrenia to batang to. Now <clears throat> if it's untreated, that is scary. It can be really scary. Things can get really, can get really out of hand yeah, if your schizophrenia is not yet, not yet being treated. Okay, it's serious. Okay, it will be a real life horror story for the people around them. And of course, what's what, what's with the deal of those people? Na may ganung tingit sa ganung tingit sa huli. What's the deal with that? Okay, and 
to my surprise, Rena is still alive. Okay, this is the biggest question. Uh, this uh, this episode uh, laid down on the table. Why is everything all right? Nagkaroon ng patay ano ba ang episode? Ah? Bakit buhay pa si Rena? Okay? Bakit nasa labas ng bakit nakalabas sa nung Bakit gano kabilis sa kalabas ng ospital si Kichi? He was stabbed tons of times in the last episode. All right? After no para ano para medyo na totro ba ako to sa napanood ko yun eh. Nat medyo na totro pa ako hanggang ngayon pag naalala ko eh. <clears throat> But the the flow of the story It's really good. Okay. Uh, talagang build up mode. Okay. It's in build up mode and the pacing yeah. The pacing is there. So as when in the final scene something something creepy turns up again. Okay. Maganda yung uh, maganda yung pacing niya tsaka yung flow ng story. And um, well a lot of humor moments kasi medyo They've gone slice of life here. The the, the anime has gone slice of, slice of life in this episode, at least in the first, in the first 15 to 20 minutes. All right. So, Higurashi 2020 episode five. One thumb up. Okay, one thumb up lang. Well. <laughs> I might have given it a two thumbs up if the um, if uh, if the animators did uh, something like what they did for Rena, yung pasundut sundut na clue as to what her true personality is, what her true um, what her true mindset is. Parang puk, parang sundut sundut lang. All right, walang ganito eh, walang ganito eh. But don't get me wrong, mga lifestyle. It's a good episode, okay? It went slice of life, kasi eh, sure, uh, the lead characters are all preteens, so dapat na talaga na medyo medyo tapo na mo na slice of life pa minsan minsan, alright? But uh, they but they did not complete and they did not completely abandon the creepy parts, okay? They reserved it all in the final scene. <laughs> They resorted it all in the final scene. But um, when I uh, when I watched this episode a while ago, uh, I kept an open mind. So, medyo my brain dug deep into what uh, Mion Mion and Sean, Mion slash Sean's deal was all about. For me, ah, for me, uh, Mion doesn't have a twin. She probably has schizophrenia. All right. Considering the psychological magnitude of this anime so far, okay, that's my conspiracy theory. All right, that's my conspiracy theory. I'm talking to the backup now. So again, Higurashi 2020 episode five. One thumb up. All right, but. I am um, well. I'm totally expecting uh, the next episode to be uh, to be back in uh, to be showcasing uh, the Higurashi we have known and uh, and got scared the shit out of in these past four episodes. <laughs> All right. I hope this anime. I hope this anime scares the shit out of me in episode five. Uh, in, in the next episode. All right. You know. You know. Okay, King's Avatar Season 2, Episode 7. We're almost done. <laughs> so, well, let's see. Um, it's a sort of. Uh, it's it's just one of those episodes where where Yezu again goes to his double dealing ways. <laughs> He tries to sell his own account, Yung Lord Grim, but. Um, eventually got uh, a better deal through a broker, right? Final scene, well, not exactly the final scene. The boss of Excellent Era, 
Okay. Met up with him. Uh, yun nga, he said no. Pero, uh, didn't one last request. Bakon, hinihingi niya yung account ni, ni, ato, ni Dancing Rain. Alright. So, I think, I think nakuha niya. Ay, binigay talaga sa kanya ng ng dati niyang kaibigan na boss ng excellent era. So, final scene, he suddenly, he suddenly recognizes the the avatar and the player behind it. Uh, Lao Wei. Who is this Lao Wei? Alright? Tinisyo na rin sa next episode. Let's see what Lao Wei, who Lao Wei is in Yeju's life. Alright? Or in his career as a pro gamer. So, overall, uh, medyo mabilis yung pacing ng story. Alright? And, uh, the flow, medyo mabilis din. Um, I couldn't exactly, what you call, I couldn't exactly get the, the story of the episode until uh, the meeting between Yeju and the, the boss of Excellent Era. Doon ko na-gets lahat. Right? Doon ko, lang na, doon ko lang na-gets lahat. Right? So, King's Avatar Season 2 Episode 7. Kasi nga, yun nga eh. Doon ko lang na-gets sa scene na yun. Yung... Yung pag... Uh, yung flow yung flow na story yung pace yung flow na story and baka ganun ang, ang bibilis sa mga voice actors na, na Chinese ano ang bibilis magsalita even even I couldn't keep up with the with the translations kasi ang bilis eh ang bilis eh right yun ang uh, yun ang reklamo ko sa episode na to but don't get me wrong okay Overall, it's a decent episode. Okay? I might have given it a higher rating kung medyo binaga lang nila ng konti. Okay? Medyo binaga nila ng konti. And, um, yun nga, basta kung binaga lang nila yung pace ng episode. Okay? I might have given them a higher, I might have given it a higher rating. So, King's Avatar Season 2 Episode 7 We we'll just have to wait for the next episode, right? Well, teenager ne, so medyo yeah. Let's just wait for the next episode, all right? All right, I'm standing on one million lives, episode five. Um, <clears throat> you should say it's an awakening episode for Hakusaki. Uh, Swords, uh, the swordswoman, and well, uh, she found a way to uh, to reverse her weakness, and she received a little training from uh, from the knight, and well, she find she finally got her first kill, okay, <laughs> goblin, and well, like I said, kanina. <clears throat> like I said, mga a lifestyle a, a while ago, she was able to um, find a way to uh, to reverse her weakness. At the last second that she's going to get killed again by uh, by that werewolf, ayun. Doon niya kinu- doon niya dinispatch yung long sword niya. Tok. Dito na dito na dito na sasak yung werewolf, di patay. <laughs> Eh, ang bigat nun. So, kasi hindi pa siya sanay, hindi pa sanay, hindi pa siya sanay actually humawak ng ganun. So, wow. What great timing. <laughs> and, the end of the episode, they were, uh, they were presented with another dilemma. Okay? So, ang interpretation ni, ni, ni Yusuke, yung mga, yung mga convict na, natulungan nila, they, they didn't really they didn't know they, they were they were convicts from another town. So, 
sabi nila, tumama namin to, hindi. Kasi, they didn't, <clears throat> the game master did not actually <clears throat> state what the goods are. Okay? So, they figured na ito yung goods na sinasabi ng game master. Okay. There's the dilemma. Okay? Kasi, uh, pag nakapatay sila ng kapatao doon, the game is over. Right? The game is over. Pero kung hindi man nila tutulungan, eh, kawawa naman. That's the dilemma there. So, final episode, they're they're uh, this? they're held with another with another um, another situation okay. another pick your poison type of situation so overall yeah it's a really good episode okay. it's a really good episode um yun nga uh, Kakuzaki is slowly developing that bloodlust okay. the bloodlust required for her job class kasi nga swordswoman siya Killing should be part of your territory, okay? Killing, killing enemies is part of the territory. So, kunti yung tila niya natatanggap yan. Adi, I think that I think that tanggap na niya dito sa episode na to. What her what her job class is all about. So, uh, story wise, yeah, maganda yung maganda yung flow, yung pacing, and uh, what you call this? The Okay, animation wise, uh, okay naman din. Okay naman din. But the story, but I'm I'm more interested in the uh, in the the story flow. Okay. Paano to makbo yung story? The pacing, uh, the pacing is uh, the pacing is really nice, okay? Okay yung pacing niya. And so, basically yeah. Fight scenes, well. Okay. Dumanak na naman ng dugo sa episode na to. Alright? Dumanak na naman ng dugo. Uh, may humor parts, yeah? May humor parts ang galing. Ang nakakatawang parts dito, yung, uh, yung pagiging sadista ng night. Yung pagiging sadista niya. So, nakapag kinikwento niya kung bakit niya gusto gusto pumatay na, bakit niya gusto gusto makakita na. go or ano okay kwento niya medyo naging creepy but at the end it was really funny it was really funny <clears throat> so I'm standing on 1 million lives episode 5 2 thumbs up who deserves the 2 thumbs up kasi mag magandang takbo na story ah this time mukhang nadala sila doon sa episode ano eh sa episode 3 na medyo minadali medyo minadali nila yung story eh dalawang quest agad kasi yun and hindi ba dapat eh alright if there is a mini quest hindi na dapat patagalin hindi na dapat patagalin yun pero if there are two real quests na take siguro na take 15-20 minutes ano eh ma masisira yung pacing here in episode 5, well, this one is part of a uh, part of their major quest. So, pero yung, uh, the pace of the story, the pacing, uh, the, how the story was paced, uh, it's really, it's really decent. Oh, it's totally acceptable. It's totally acceptable. And of course, the, uh, the flow of the story. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing else I should say. Okay? So, again, I'm standing on 1 million lives episode 5. Two thumbs up. Okay? Two thumbs up. Whoa, I did not record. Bale. Okay. Satisfied? You should. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 22. Mm -hmm. It's that time again to review another, another, another Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode. Now, <clears throat> eto na naman tayo. Ang kalaban na naman si Arai, right? I've never seen, okay, a cheater like him in this anime franchise since Bandit Keith, okay? 
Para pa na dual boxer shorts sa Duelist Kingdom pa. The Duelist Kingdom art. All right? Yung nakalaban ni Yugi si Pegasus. Okay? And I thought Bandit Cake was the ultimate cheat in the game. Dito sa 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 franchise na to. Nope. Ara it takes that takes that title away from him na. <laughs> Because first time. Okay? First time patagosan man patagosan ng daya. But here This is totally unforgivable. Langtara na siya kung mandaya. Alright? Good thing, Luke was able to beat him. In the final episode, ooh, 6,700 points, ubos kay Luke. In OTK siya nito. <laughs> OTK City, folks. OTK City. <clears throat> Then what? Yuga did some double dealing na kuha nilang information. Hmm. Susugurin na nila si Neil. Okay. Wow. Walang kadaladala itong atong hayop na to, si Arai. Okay. Walang kadaladala. Nadiscovery na siya, magdaraya na siya noon. Eto pa rin siya. Sige pa rin. And he had the go to challenge Luke. <laughs> My God. Munti pa nga. Pero, siguro kung hindi siya lang daya, yung deck out strategy niya, That's effective, all right? Even in real life, okay? Ako alam ko, okay? Minsan na rin ako nagamitan ng deck out strategy. Good thing I was able to see it. Okay? But eventually, uh, I lost that match. But in a single duel, muntik na, muntik na akong i-deck out ng kalaban ko. Right? Good thing I was able to... I was able to find a way around it. Deck out is a legit strategy. In the card, it's a legit strategy in the card game. Pero kung sasamahan mo ng pagdaraya, nope. I'm sorry. If Arai would do that in a real-life tournament, wala na. Ban na siya sa larong to. Ban na siya. Alright? <clears throat> so, overall, well, it's a really good episode, okay? I love how the duel how this duel ran. Okay? Well scripted. Well, de, well scripted is an understatement. Excellently scripted. Ang, ang duel na to. Alright? And, the pacing, well, typical Yu-Gi-Oh! fashion. Okay? Typical Yu-Gi-Oh! fashion, especially when a duel is involved. Fast-paced siya. Alright? Fast-paced. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I like. All right, that's one thing I like. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 22. Two thumbs up. All right. Two thumbs up. And, of course, but, hindi ko na makakalimutan. Now we know the origin of Luke's poly effect. Yung rilong, yung rilong binigay sa kanya na lelong niya. Siguro, well, Here's my theory on it, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Here's my theory on it. <clears throat> Imagine, lelong niya ang nagbigay. Okay? Ito ay sipin nyo. Lelong niya ang nagbigay. His great-grandfather. So let's assume na ganong kaluma yung rilong yun. Right? Let's say, um, Let's say it's a really old wristwatch, uh, analog format, right? Because old analog watches usually emit static electricity. I know. I used to have an analog watch before when I was uh, when I was 11, 12 years old. And minsan, minsan nakakaramdam ako ng kuryente sa loob. Nakakaramdam ako minsan, right? So these old analog watches can emit static electricity. Eh, <clears throat> and this day and age, eh, puro digital na ang surroundings natin eh. So they are prone to that. They are prone to that. Okay? Now, we, we can still call it the poly effect kasi yun talaga ang tinerm dun eh. Yun talaga ang tinerm dun. Pero, it's not, who doesn't, 
<clears throat> we found out in this episode, Luke does not actually have the poly effect in his body. It's being emitted by his wrist, by his wristwatch. Kaya lang hindi naapektuhan yung dual disc niya kasi tinatanggal niya yon para maisot niya ang dual disc niya. Kasi kung hindi niya tatanggalin yun, hindi magkakasya. Alright? So, so, that's, uh, that's a myth. Uh, we've, this episode has already busted that myth. Okay? Luke doesn't actually have the poly effect in running through his body. It's his wrist. Sa wristwatch niya lang gagaling. Sarilo niya. Na binigay sa kanya ng lolo niya. Na lelong niya. So, kaya let's assume na super luma yung rilong yun. It's still, it emits static electricity. Yun ang effect. Alright? So, again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 22. Two thumbs up. A poly effect kind of two thumbs up. Alright? Woo! I can't wait for the next episode. Tinisar na. Next up, ah, I'm gonna give it to you. If you haven't watched that episode, if you haven't watched this episode, I said su- I strongly suggest you watch it now. Because it's na the next episode. For me, I'm excited. Bahala kay sa buwan yung panoorin yun. All right. King's Raid Episode 5. Hmm. One thing was, uh, <clears throat> I noticed something empowering in this episode, alright? Castle, real, Castle uh, knew his mistake from last episode, right? He held himself. <clears throat> Well, he basically held himself accountable for uh, uh, for for losing it, all right? He held, he held himself accountable for losing it. He said uh, he wasn't worthy of the power of the Holy Spirit because of what he did. Pero uh, he knows uh, it's not the way. It's not the way to attain its power. Which is, uh, well, that can make a pretty good moral lesson, okay? And, seen the final scene, okay? Sinabi nung una niya nakalaban ng babaeng demon, the holy sword is Lua's curse. Okay, let's backtrack. Si Lua, kinakapatid ng tatay niya. She attempted to make a copy of the holy sword. Pero, nahuli, uh, nahuli siya. So, she was, uh, she was convicted and executed for that. Right. And this, <clears throat> her, um, what you call this? Her conviction happened matapos mawala si King Kyle. After, after defeating the Dark Lord. Naw- nawala rin eh. Okay. No one knows actually kung buhay o patay na talaga si King Kyle, yung tati ni Castle. Right? So why would she say na it's, the Holy Sword is also Lua's curse. Alright? I do not want to take things literally here. May ibig sabihin ng demonyong to. Alright? That's, that left Castle confused. Okay? And, and the rest of the, and the rest of his, uh, and the rest of his party. So, after Realizing his uh, his worth again, after achieving the first uh, the first seal to be the first seal to be unlocked, okay, pumayag pumayag nga na na unlock ni Lorraine yung kanye over the Holy Sword. So there are two locks left. So pupunta sa nangyayon sa mga sa mga budok nandun yung dalawa. After realizing his worth and unsealing. And, and unlocking the first seal of the sword. Here is this. Here is this lady demon, uh, clouding his mind. Right. So this is the. Uh, this is the. I don't know. 
uh, I don't know about you, mga lifestyle, but if you can't call, if this is not a plot twist to you, I don't know what is. All right? But overall, it's a really good episode. Okay? It's a really good episode wherein, well, the pacing, the, uh, the flow of the story, hindi siya minadali, hindi rin, hindi rin nakakaantok. Okay? <clears throat> but don't get me wrong, okay? Hindi ako, I yawn sometimes because of, well, not because of the not, be, not because of the animes I watch, okay? But literally kasi antukin ako by nature, all right? Whether kahit uminom kahit uminom ako ng kape ng ganitong oras, inaantok pa rin ako. All right? So, don't get me wrong, okay? I well, hey, I did not yawn all throughout this episode, all right? So, that means this episode is really good. Okay? So, in that light, King's Raid Episode 5, two thumbs up, right? A very um, uh, enlightening two thumbs up. Kasi, um, if there's anything you should learn from this episode, it's all about accountability, all right? Castle knew he made a mistake in episode 4 by by actually losing his mind after after seeing his uh after seeing that uh his newfound friend being killed like that okay talagang pinaggutay-gutay siya ng demon he totally lost it all right he totally lost it and he knew it he he held himself accountable in this episode pero it shouldn't be to the point that you're that you're feeling self-pity, right? Um, so this his friends made him realize that, right? And naaramdaman naman ni Lorraine na he is the heir. Anak siya talaga ni King Kyle. He is worthy of the power. So so kaya nga siya pumayag na yan lak ng seal niya dun sa sa sword ng sa sa holy sword so pumayag na rin siyang i-unlock yung seal niya so, yeah it's it's practically it's practically a lesson in accountability right this is lesson for you guys <laughs> personal development lesson for you guys all right for every for every action of yours always Make it a point to always hold yourself accountable. Right? So, yun ang, yun ang naging lesson dito sa episode na to. That's why I gave it that rating. Again, King's Raid Episode 5, two thumbs up. Alright? Two thumbs up. Now, I don't, know about you, I, know, I don't know about you, but I'm going to wait for the next episode. I really want to find out kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng demonyong yan sa si- yung sinabi niya kay Castle. Okay? The Holy Sword is Lua's curse. I really want to know what's the deal with that. Alright. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen Episode 5. Wow. Okay. Never, I, never have I seen an episode wherein the lead character dies mid-episode. <laughs> First time, right? First time talaga. In, um, in at least a supernatural anime. Okay? Jujutsu Kaisen is, is, is a supernatural anime. Right? <clears throat> First time that I've seen uh, the lead character in such an, an- uh, in, in such an anime dies. Okay? Mid-episode pa. Okay? So, yeah. I'm a bit sad. I was sad. And saka talaga speechless ako. Okay. I was speechless with what with, uh, with with what actually happened. Okay. But in the final scene, did you see the final scene? Oh, takri pinod. Boy pa si boy pa si Suko na. At yung and I think he's talking to to Itadori's soul. Okay. Uh, Itadori's first name is Yuji. Si Yuji. 
Kausap niya yung kaluluwa ni Yuji. Both are still inside Yuji's body. Na obvious. Wala nang puso. Kasi dinukot na ni Suko na tinapon nila sa isang tabi na, na parang uh, na parang empty. Parang uh, water bottle na wala nang laman eh. Parang ganun lang eh. Parang basura. Tinapon nila sa isang tabi na parang basura. Right? Wow. Okay. Um, new characters were introduced both for on the side of uh, the heroes and the side of evil, right? <clears throat> there is probably, uh, this is probably one sorcerer na, ano eh, nasa linya ni, yung ka, ang kausap ay tatlong cursed. Ano eh, nasa linya ni, ni Suko na, but not as, but not as uh, strong as Suko na, alright? Wow! Did you see how Suko na leveled, uh, Uh, Negumi's powers Okay Yung Yung ahas pina, Pinasabog niya na parang Parang lobo And Muntik na rin mamatay yung Yung parang Yung parang alagang Kuwago Ni Negumi Kung hindi niya Winitdraw Baka napatay rin yun eh Alright Overall Wow Okay It's a freaky good episode It's a freaky good episode. The, the, the story's flow and pacing. Yeah. All right. Kasi we've been used to um, we've been used to the first four episodes na talagang fast-paced siya. Ito medyo oh. Kumi ah, uh, talagang naghinay-hinay lang kumaga nagminor. Right? It went into it went into low it switched into a lower gear. Umaga, right. car car speak. Okay, it switched into it switched to a lower gear. I say, um, I don't know. Pero ako medyo okay ako sa pacing nito. Okay, the lead character dies mid dies mid episode. Then new characters are introduced. Then in the final scene, you see Suko na still alive inside inside Yuji's body pe at kausap niya seemingly. Yung kaluluwa ni Yuji. Although it has been teasered in the next episode at sila naman ang magsasago pa. Yung dalawang yan. Alright? It's also a good setup. Okay? Because of, because of what it was what was teasered after. Alright? And did you see uh, did you see the the short? Did you see the short? <laughs> okay? Not, not exactly na nakakata. Iba yung iba yung nando si Yuji. Iba yung nando si Yuji. Alright. Iba yung ano eh, hindi masyadong hindi masyadong nakakatay itong short kung sumunod na short na to eh. Iba talaga kung if the short is if the short has re, has, has UG in it. Iba yung humor eh. Pero right now, talagang ramdam eh. Ramdam yung pagkawala niya eh. Uh, even uh, even uh, the second half of the episode talagang ramdam ng lahat yung pagka, pagkawala niya eh. Ramdam ng lahat. Although he, he's only been a jujutsu for two weeks, okay, ka- kaumpisa pa lang niya eh. Kaumpisa pa lang. Ayun. Namatay na siya agad. So, Jujutsu Kaisen Episode 5, two thumbs up. Okay. Two thumbs up. What? I should have, I should be giving it the one thumbs up kasi medyo Um, tumigil yung action pack sequences mid mid episode kasi nga namatay yung lead character namatay si UG but come to think of it the first half of the episode was awesome alright pinag halos pagwagwagan ni ni Suko na si Megumi dun eh from building katatasik pa lang niya babanata niya agad so they went from building to building okay sabi nga nyo doon, let's use the open space. Okay? He just, he showed Megumi how sadistic he, how sadistic he is. Okay? Talaga sadista. Sadista siyang kalaban. And he showed Megumi that. Okay? Talagang, wow. Alright? That fight scene. Wait, to, 
that fight scene, wow, okay? Um, mind-blowing. Okay? If it weren't for the mind-blowing fight scene, to tell you frankly, I might have given it a lower rating. But, uh, with that to highlight the entire episode, tapos yung mga, yung aftermath, yung aftermath, tsaka yung, yung, tawag dito, on how Yuji actually died kasi, um, basically, kinausap lang siya ng ano eh, kinausap lang siya ng masinsina ni, ano eh, ni Megumi. Kaya siya nakalabas. But, it was too late. Wala na siyang puso. So, boom. Bumulagta na lang. Patay! Alright. Wala na siyang puso eh. So, para, para siya mabubuhay nun. Di ba? Para siya mabubuhay. Eh, dinukot nga, dinukot na nga ni, Sek, ni, ni Suko na yung puso niya eh. Tinapon na lang na parang basura. Ak- akala mo yung nagtatapon na ng, ano eh, ng bulok na kamatis eh, sa isang tabi. Alright? So, again, Jujutsu Kaisen Episode 5, two thumbs up. Right? Mind you, two thumbs up. Well, we better wait for the next episode. All right, Yashahime episode five. Whew. Sabi ko na ba, sabi ko na ba yung pagiging double dealer ni, ni, ni Moro ka would, would get her into trouble someday. And ayan, all right. Um, well, the final scene, wala na akong masabi. Unlike her father, na unlimited ang demon, ang demon energy, once she uses hers, si Moroha, tulog na siya for a day. <laughs> tulog na siya for a day. Alright? The Red Pearl can only give her that much power. Kasi, half, half demon siya, half human. So, alright? Tsaka quarter spirit kasi, because of, uh, because of Kikyo's essence. Kasi meron, meron din siya. Overall, it's a good episode, okay? It's a good episode with a bit of humor kasi dahil, kid, well, dahil na naman kay Moro ka, alright? And yung angasan, okay? Yung, yung angasan, ng, anas, angasan ng kambal, si Setsu na si Tom. <laughs> alright? That was a, it was a blast watching it. I had a blast watching it, alright? I had a blast watching it. At saka yung, ano eh, of course, the pacing... Okay. Vintage Inuyasha ang pacing. Right? Hindi siya nagmamadali sa storya, but may mga, may mga, may mga sundot-sundot na mga action sequences until boom. The final action sequence, they kill one of the four perils. Alright? They kill one of the four perils. So, it will have reper- repercussions. Kaya nga four perils ang tawag eh. Apat sila. Apat silang alagad ni Kirin Maru. Right? Because if they, they kill Kirin Maru, their father will appear, si Sesho Maru. Yun ang goal nila eh. Mapatay nila, mapatay nila tatay nila. Nang, nang gambal actually. Whew. I never thought, um, to call this, Nyoga would would, uh, would show him, would show himself here. <laughs> yung alagang, yung alagang, yung alagang pulgas ni Inuyasha, you still remember those Inuyasha fans? Yung super liit na, na demonyo na pulgas, na parating dumidikit kay Inuyasha nun. Naki, naki Toha na pala siya. Naki Entoha. Naki Morohan na pala siya. Grabe. Natawa ako dun eh. I thought, okay, happy days are here again. <laughs> Dumatadag na mga comic relief, okay? I would love to see Seshumaro's sidekick again here, okay? Not just in the flashback, but dito, okay? They would, um, he would meet up with, he would meet up with his daughters, okay? Kompleto na comic relief pag ganyan. <laughs> Kompleto na magiging comic relief, alright? Tagayo sa bato yan. 
Pag lumabas din yung pag lumabas din yung psychic ni sa Sumaro na yun. Ay nako. Like I said, overall, it's a good episode. All right? It's a good episode. And of course, the slam bang finish that is typical that is vintage Ido Yasha. It's here. So, Yasha Hime episode 5. Two thumbs up. Primarily because they they were able to slay one of the four perils. Okay. So, wow. And of course, yung the um, the laugh trips <laughs> and um, and Morocco's double dealing. Okay, it's the main laugh trip here. Eh. It's the main laugh trip here. Yung pagiging double dealer ni Morocco. Grabe. Grabe yun. So again, Yasahime episode five. Two thumbs up. All right. Two thumbs up. Now, the uh, the next episode has been teasered. Looks really good. Let's wait for that. All right. <clears throat> Warlords of Secret Warlords of Secret Drifa episode 5. Quite a uh, quite a setup episode, a contemplative episode, All right? Um the Valkyries, um, through uh, their, their, what you call this? Yung bago na ng kasama si, ama, si, uh, Amatsu, si Amatsuka, si Amatsuka. Uh, nalaman nila yun, may, con- may counter-offensive, and, well, it's being sponsored by Odin. So, what do you do? You just follow orders. And, but, Hindi mo rin maalis yung, ano eh. Hindi, ma, hindi maalis sa mga isip nila na mukhang malaki yan to ah. Mukhang malaki yung, mukhang malaki yung laban to ah. In the final scene, we all found out that, well, Odin is considering this to be Ragnarok. Yung, yung counter-offensive na to against the, the Fuji primary pillar. Ganong kaabang ganon. Is considering this to be to be Ragnarok. Well, you know, I realized uh, ganun lang talaga yung reaction ko eh. Seryoso? Is he considering this to be Ragnarok? Alright? Now, in case some of you um, are not familiar, Ragnarok is the equivalent of uh, is the is the Norse version of the end of days. If you're if you're a Hindu, you would call it the Mahapralaya, the Mahatpralaya. If you're a Christian like me, if you're a, if you're Catholic, you would call it Armageddon. Okay. It's the Christian term for the the final battle, Armageddon. Okay. So here it's called Ragnarok. Of course, uh, we're following Norse mythology here. So, tarikom. Serious Odin? Is this Ragnarok already? Alright. And well, um, the reason why I said it's a contemplative episode kasi mayroong mayroong gap pala between Sonoka and uh, kay Amatsuka. Okay. Parang may gap sila eh. Sonoka doesn't want to talk to her. Right? She doesn't want any part of her. Si, um, all this. The others naman, well, they're, they're civil with her. Especially si, um, si, Mo, si Monoka. I don't know, I, I, I forgot her name. Eh. Uh, Claudia, yeah, Claudia is also civil with her. So, overall, well, it's the, um, It's a decent episode. It's a decent episode. Mainly because of, well, of, uh, of the final scene. Okay? Odin, Odin stating at, that this will be Ragnarok. Like, I'm, I'm just a big fan of this. 
I thought, serious Odin? Are you serious? Is this Ragnarok already? Ah, ilal, ilalan mo mga buhay na mga Valkyrie mo with the with something with something with a, with a with with this kind of a mission. So yun nga, overall, it's a decent episode. It's a really decent episode, believe me. Right? So, Warlords of Sigurd Drifa episode 5. One thumb up. One thumb up lang. Kasi, well, I don't know. Kasi, uh, yung, yung rival, uh, hindi nga ako natawa dun sa ano eh. Hindi nga ako natawa dun sa yung pag yung pag meet ng shield squad ng dalawang shield squadron I don't know why I didn't I don't know why I did not laugh so much this time right for me it was it was it was cliche okay it was cliche and what well, the the scene that really got that really got me sold on this episode was the final one was the final one okay talagang napatanong ako Napatanong ako kay Odin. Right? I don't know. All of us don't know what uh, what's going on in this God's mind. Okay? Isusuong, isusuong niya ng uh, isusuong niya ang, limang va- ang buhay ng limang Valkyrie or actually everybody on that base sa ganitong klaseng laban. I don't know. I really don't know what's going what's going through Odin's mind right now. Right, so that that uh, that led me to that led me to giving this rating. So again, Warlords of Secret Trifa episode five. One thumb up, right? One thumb up. So we'll just have to we'll just have to wait for the next episode. Let's see, right? Let's see. All right. <laughs> Fix the lighting there. Moriarty the Patriot, episode five. Ah, uh, episode four, pala. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Okay. What can I say? All right. It's another. It's another devious take on, <laughs> on uh, on how sick. Okay. On how sick. James Moriarty is. All right. Kasi sa now, puro, puro adult, adult na silang magkakapatid. Alright. In this episode, may dinari na naman silang corrupt na nobleman. Alright. Humingi na ng tulong sa kanila yun eh. Yung, yung hardinero. Na, uh, hindi, na talagang hindi tinulungan ng, ng nobleman na to para gamutin yung may sakit nilang anak nun. Eventually, namatay yung anak nilang yun. Alright. Wow! I never thought um, what you call this death would be this scientific okay Furano Kumarin is a compound is a uh, it's an organic chemical found mostly in uh, I think in fruits but it's most abundant in grapefruit alright eh uminom pa ng quinine ang ang noble man ito Winning at the time is the uh, is the preferred. Huh? Okay, it's the preferred um, medicine for heart ailments. Okay, eh, alam natin lahat ang kuinin may side effects yan. Especially kapag hinaluan ng pag pag sinabay mo ng pag-inom ng juices, okay? Because most of the uh, most fruits have this comp, have this, uh, have this chemical, yung forano kumarin, right? I, I hope I, I hope I got it right. I hope I got the pronunciation right. Basta, lahat ng sour fruits, I think meron ito. Kaya pala wina warning ako ng doktor ko na mag, na mag ng tumira na mga sour, na mga anything sour. <laughs> All right. Eto ang effect niyan. Forano o Forano Kumarin combined with quinine okay 
it will drop your heart rate. Basta lang natitigil ang puso mo. Ganun lang yun. Ganun lang yun. Ganun ang nangyari sa nobleman na to. Kasi, siyempre, nag- nagkakain ng ano, grapefruit, um, grapefruit marmalade, uminom pa ng grapefruit juice. Tapos, medyo nagalit sa ano, kasi tinangkang, tinangasang patayin ng, ano, ng asawang babae, ng wife, ng gardener. O, siyempre, medyo kakabog na dibdib niyan. Palpitations. O, binigyan. <clears throat> Sinadjes ka agad nila Moriarty na minunok agad ng gamot. Queenin. Okay. So, after a few, after a few minutes, ayun na. Nagbagal na yung heart rate hanggang sa tumigil ang puso. Patay! Okay. Patay! Alright? Patay ka agad. This is how um, this is how devious Moriarty is. James Moriarty. Alam nyo, yung ganong klaseng kamatayan, hindi mapagkakaman ng hindi magkakaman ng hindi magkakaman ng martyr yun. It could even be ruled out as an accident. Kasi, nasobra na ng kain ng ano eh, kain ng grapefruit, tapos biglang uminom ng kanyang gamot na quinin. Boom! Bumagsak ang heart rate. Okay. Bumagsak ang blood pressure pala. Bumagsak ang blood pressure, so, pag bumagsak ang blood pressure, it means, tumitigil na puso mo. Tumitigil na. That's what happened. He died of heart failure. Alright? But no one will notice na, boy, pinatay pala to. Hindi pala natural causes. Alright? Pero mapag, during those times, kasi talagang hindi pa ganun ka-advance ang, ang forensics natin. Okay? During the time period of this anime, hindi pa ganun ka-advance ang forensics. So, they would instantly rule it as died of natural causes or even or even an accident. Kasi napar- naparami ng kain ng pagkain magpagkain bawal. I don't I don't know kung bawal na at the time for people with heart ailments yung yung ganong pagkain, yung ganong yung mga pro, yung mga sour fruits. So yun nga, ganun nga nangyari. All right? Overall, wow. It's it's a hellishly good episode. Okay? It's a hellishly good episode. Once again, we've seen how evil James Moriarty is. Okay? Pero uh, pero in this anime, he's the hero. Right? Let's just say um for the sake of argument, he's an anti-hero here. He's an anti-hero. Okay? Hindi pa siya yung hindi pa siya yung James Moriarty na nakilala natin bilang kalaban ni Sherlock Holmes. Nope. Hindi pa siguro. <clears throat> the, the flow, the pacing, impeccable. Alright? Hindi, that's what I love about uh, some animes. Eh. They're not in a rush to tell a story in an episode. Okay? They're not in a rush to tell a story within an episode. Okay? This is, a, this is a fine example. Episode 4 of Moriarty the Patreon. Right? Animation-wise, yep. <laughs> that look on Moriarty's face, that look in his eyes, nung nalaman niyang, hmm, kliyente. <laughs> you, you would get that look in his eyes that, uh, that he, you know, he's found another client for his consultancy business. Alright? His crime consultancy business. So, yeah. He is he was really devious in this movie in this uh, in this in this uh, in this episode. Talaga mas Simon devious sa talaga. All right. So, Moriarty the Patriot episode 4. Two thumbs up. All right? An evil two thumbs up. Okay? Grabe. <clears throat> Imagine, okay? Someone getting Someone uh, staging a murder like this. Mur- Imagine, murder can be can be a science. And 
James Moriarty has has, uh, has shown us all that murder can also be a science. Okay. Tempting to reconnect. Anyway, tuloy tuloy tayo. Again, Moriarty the Patriot, Episode 4. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Don't worry, it's just water. <clears throat> okay. Ikibukuro Westgate Park, Episode 5. What? It's quite an empowering episode, I should say. Right? They, um... Let's call this. They carried the momentum from Episode 4. We're in, uh... Uh, merong... May natulungan na naman si Makoto. Without... Without, without actually, uh, without actually seeking out the G Boys' help, okay, yung dati niyang gang, okay. <clears throat> he was able to uh, uh, to help a Chinese girl uh, get a job here, basically, para ni to stave off deportation, okay. Kasi may <clears throat> I don't know uh, if some of you know this, but Japan is very st- Japan has a very strict immigration law. Okay? They're very strict when it comes to that. Now, <clears throat> may kinachapa siyang uh, isa pang Chinese. So, yun nga. In the final scene, well, sobrang bait talaga yung nani ni Makoto eh. <laughs> Inampun niya. Inampun ng nanay. So, nag, so bigla-bigla, nagkaroon ng kapatid si Makoto. <laughs> Bigla siya nagkaroon ng kapatid. Alright? Kasi naawa yung nanay niya. So, well, overall, um, uh, it's a very light-hearted episode. Alright? It's a very light-hearted episode. Kasi, <clears throat> they've gone through, they've gone through all these channels. Okay? Kasi, Talagang crucial itong <clears throat> pagsalba sa Chinese girl na ito eh. Go is her, real, girl, go is her name eh. Uh, kasi kung di siya matagpuan, 250 of her compatriots would be deported. Kumbaga yun ang, yun ang ultimatum ng Japanese Labor Ministry. Labor Ministry sa factory na yun. Lahat, lahat ng kasama niya madideport. Ibabalik lahat sa China. Okay. Pag hindi siya natagpuan. So yeah, she decided to she decided to work for that factory again para <clears throat> wag lang madamay yung mga kasama kanya doon. And um para kay nag umaga nag under the table si Nani ni Makoto at saka yung mapangalan niya, yung the, the Chinese guy na na kinutsaba ni Makoto. So yun, yeah, nag magagawa ng paraan. Pwede niya, pwede, pwede ampunin ng nani ni Makoto yung sigo, yung babae. So, kumaga, it's a way out of um, deportation eh. Not, <clears throat> she'll become a naturalized Japanese citizen and she's now free to work in that country. Malaya na siya makaka- makakahanap ng trabaho na gusto niya. Alright. So, so, it's a very, uh, a very light-hearted episode, all right. But don't get me wrong, it's a really good one. Okay, it's a good one. This must be the road this anime is going to. Okay, so I, I kind of like it. Kind of like it, kasi ano <clears throat> natin lahat sa episodes one and two talagang nagpakita ng nagpakita ng bangis ang G boys, all right? They're not. They are not a gang who's out there for money or for or just for the or just for violence. They want justice. Justice ang dahilan nila kung bakit bakit existing yung gang nila. And it's and it's really good, okay? <clears throat> They're sort of a a vigilante gang, okay? Na somewhat sanctioned by by Tokyo police. <clears throat> okay? Kasi may mga Kasi, ang chief of police nila, dating G-Boy. Okay. Yung police inspector naman na kilala nila, 
kilala ng family ni Makoto, ay eh, talagang nakasubaybay kay Makoto ever since pa. Nung, even before he joined the J-Boys. <laughs> okay? May mga nagawa rin kasi kalukuhan nung araw si Makoto. So, kilalang kilala siya ng pulis na to. Pero, uh, Makoto also helps out in that, in that uh, police inspector's cases. As in, episode 3. Yeah. Episode 3. So, it's, <clears throat> I love the road. Um, this anime is uh, going is going on. Okay. I love it. It's empowering. It's lighthearted, and uh, it always has a moral lesson. Okay. It always it always has a moral lesson. Ever since ano pa, ever since episode one pa. All right. So, Ikebukuro Westgate Park, episode five. Two thumbs up. An empowering two thumbs up. Kasi, well, akala ko, akala ko nga nung una eh, puro, puro gang war to eh. Right? Kasi, sa key visual pa lang, doon ko in-assume. Yeah, this will be, uh, <clears throat> this, will in, this will involve gangs. <clears throat> okay, this will involve gangs. But, uh, it has, uh, it has kept the theme of justice through legal and illegal means. Right, tandaan ninyo. The G-Boys screwed a drug syndicate in episode 1. Right? They screwed a drug syndicate. Kaya kaya natiklo yung kaya natiklo yung sindikato yun eh, dahil sa kanila. They did um uh, they employed under the table tactics para ma para matiklo ang sindikatong to. They did not actually resort to violence. No. The only time I think the only time the uh, the G-Boys uh, employed violence was in episode 2 nung na-prime up sila at pinag, pinag-aawi sila ng Red, ng Red Angels right? you remember that? the gang with the with the ballerino has a, as a leader <laughs> yun, that's the Red Angels <clears throat> so again Ikibukuro Westgate Park episode 5 2 thumbs up 2 thumbs up So, Noblesse Episode 5. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> the final scene took my breath away. Okay. The final scene actually took my breath away because nakakagipita na, nakakapatayan na, okay. unti-unti, unti-unti na nananaig ang mga kontrabida, in comes Rizel. Okay. With that look on his face, pulang pula ang mata. All right. If that is indication that he's going to release, that he's going to use his powers now, woo! <laughs> I can't wait for the next episode. But story-wise, and uh, because of the the, um, the pace, the pacing, at sa yung flow ng story. Right? Nothing short of exciting. Okay? The, they built the momentum up to that point. Okay? Which is, which is the final scene. At saka yung... Kumbaga eh... Uh, what we call this? A morality check for M21. Right? And of course, see si Regis. Well, let's see. Morality check na rin, alright? <clears throat> Whoops, sorry. Okay. Let me pull this one. Right there na lang. Yan, okay. Nahulog yung backup natin. <clears throat> the flow of the story, the pacing of the story. Alright? Nothing short of... I'm speechless, okay? Nothing short of speechless. At saka yung... Yan nga, morality check. And, all right, so M21 has decided to talagang help out na. Wala na siya, paki, wapaki na siya kung ano bang mangyari sa kanya eh. Basta matulungan lang yung mga bago niyang kaibigan, all right? So, yeah, that's the morality check there. But, 
Okay. Frankenstein has also showed what he can do. Right? Freaky. <laughs> Freaky ang powers niya. Okay? Na, nagkalaban siya ng sniper dito eh. And, okay. In order for the, in order for the bad guys to, to totally beat them all, they have to use drugs. Okay? Parang mga performance enhancers, kumbaga eh. So, doon na sila nagkaroon ng upper hand. Okay? Which is part of the flow of the story kasi uh, DA5 is known to known to use that. The union is known to, to use that. Okay? And DA5 is authorized to do that. Yung kinakain nila mga, parang mga gamot na gano'n para, para, para maging superhuman sila. Alright? I really want to see if Kranz in his uh, in his drug itself, okay, in his drug itself would stand up against the king of vampires himself, si Ryzen. That I want to see in the next episode. Yun ang na-build up ng final scene. Alright? Makes me want to, makes me, makes me really want to, um, what you call this, to, to get it, to get all hyped up for the next one. But overall, okay, overall, this is a really good episode. Episode 5. Alright? Nagkasuguran eh. Okay? Nagkasuguran, nagkasubukan, nagkakasubukan na. Okay? The only thing that's left to, left to be seen here is the, the fight between Kranz and Ryzen. Alright? That I want to see. <laughs> that I want to fucking see. Okay? Okay, grab... Okay, not... not I'm not much into graphics kasi pero I'm gonna mention it. Graphics-wise, okay na okay. okay. Production IG is okay, is uh, it's doing its job in uh, in giving us a really good interpretation of the of the manhwa. Right? Tandaan natin. <laughs> Noblesse along with Tower of God and God of High School are the holy trinity of manhwa. Okay? They, they all came from Korea and you never you never expect a um, you never expect an anime uh, an anime this good would be based on a Korean uh, on a Korean storyline or a Korean manhwa eh? that's why they're called the Holy Trinity of Manhwa their storylines are that good and noblesse five episodes in medyo convinced na ako talagang it should be part of that Holy Trinity Right? So again, so again, boy, it's gonna be the first time I'm going to rate it. No bless episode five. Two thumbs up. Alright, two thumbs up. <clears throat> well, I'm glad to see Shark die, okay? Scumbag she. <laughs> and to be killed by his own leader, who's well, who's practically have, have had enough of his antics, alright? Even his own leader has had, has had enough of his antics. Kaya, siya na mismo tumumbak kay Shark. <laughs> it was quite satisfying seeing Shark die in this movie. <laughs> in this movie. In this, uh, in this episode. Alright? Talaga, kaya ganun lang yung reaction ko kanina eh. When, uh, when the opening credits, when the, when the OP, when the OP showed, when the OP uh, came, kaya ganun lang reaction ko eh. I really want to see Shark die here. Ayun nga, nangyari. But it wasn't at uh, any of the hero's hands. It's by its own leader. Okay. Pinatay siya mismo na sarili niyang pinudo. Napuno na rin sa kanya. Alright? So, again, Noblesse Episode 5. Two thumbs up. Alright? Two thumbs up. I just can't wait for the next episode. Another uh, <clears throat> another week full of uh, great episodes. Not to mention um, fully uh, achieving what I have been trying to what I've been trying to achieve in the past three or four weeks over at Twitch, which is the twenty four plus hour stream. Right? These twelve reviews you just saw were part of a twenty eight hour stream. All right, it's my um, it's the longest stream I have ever done on Twitch. Okay, or for for any uh, for any streaming service for that matter. Right, 
I have, I have never streamed on YouTube for that long. All right, but on Twitch, 28 hours and 25 minutes. But officially, it's uh, it's almost just it's just almost 26 hours because well, I've experienced uh, lagginess and uh, occasional disconnections. So, but for me, I was streaming for 28 hours and 25 minutes, right? And these 12 reviews were a part of it, were parts of it, right? So, well, uh, this uh, this digest may be coming in late because well, it took it, it took a it took a really good while for me to to compile this to 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 edit it thoroughly and well i'm sure that you've enjoyed watching this video right although it's uh it's more than it's more than an hour long but i am very sure you've had your fill of this week's episode reviews so maka lifestyle thank you for sticking out to this video and well thank you for at least hanging out for this long to see this outro right till next digest